Okay, let's see what we got here. I'll tell you um, what we're doing. And we're doing a voiceover here because it's really windy in this video and you'll see it pop up here. Sorry about the wind. And um, we made this video, it's kind of boring. So they asked for a voiceover so you can see what's happening and, and do some ha have some filler and all. So I am, there you go, sorry for the wind. And instead, we're gonna do a voiceover. And there I am, pulling the auger out. But what we're doing here is replacing some feed tubes. So that white tube you see is the is the uh, tube and there's sliding inside of it. Well, the tube wears thin after 13 years in a hog house. So we have to replace some chunks and you'll see it here later in the video. And um, we gotta pull that out and it's quite a complicated process. And we thought we'd show you this um, for several reasons. This is what we're doing in the winter time. Um, everything you do farming is not exciting. Uh, there's a lot of stuff like this and there's a lot of farm videos on YouTube if you watch and they always manage to make it pretty entertaining and exciting but there's a lot of this stuff that goes on and it's not entertaining and not exciting and it's a challenge so we um, we want to show you this <coughs> we uh, it's a daily grind and it takes a lot of this especially in the winter and winter can get pretty monotonous and boring so we thought we'd show you this and we thought I thought I, they, they uploaded it to YouTube they didn't like it they said it's kind of boring and they said dad can you do a voiceover so here I am doing a voiceover now this is that's called the anchor and we take the anchor out and I'm explaining to her right here how dangerous this is now that sp spring slinky looking thing could go could shoot back in and I tell Abby never ever and, we, and Papa there is explaining to her never ever let your finger get in there if those vice grips there or that stick popped out it, it would and you had your finger there it would ch literally chop your finger off and I told her or or maybe possibly even take the take all the meat off the, of your bone it just would be bad so we use strings and techniques to try to keep our fingers out of there but if it goes back in, in full force it's just it's uh could be catastrophic so here we are inside <clears throat> and if you'll notice during this video we're not all that excited and um, this is not enjoyable work it's rusty it's cold it was windy it's kind of miserable and I'm explaining to her here uh, about taking the top off and there's a clamp in there there's some set screws they're rusty they're difficult to get off and uh, it, it's it's just an all-around challenge and so here I'm trying to take even the top cover off and they're rusted from being in a hog house for 13 years and I eventually just take a hacksaw and I, I get that one off and then I twist the lid open where I can see and uh, Abby's doing all the filming here um, she's cold by the end of the video she's kind of shivering she said uh, and so she she said maybe I didn't do the best job filming or interviewing or getting close-ups and stuff so maybe you could uh, explain what's going on uh, in the voiceover so um, there I am with a hacksaw and it's not a real enjoyable job uh, if you want to know about farming you just have to understand there's a lot of these not so enjoyable jobs and it's what takes it's, it's the guts of the farming uh, industry it's the guts of the farm it's, it's what keeps it going it's it's not fun to look at not fun to do but if you want a real taste of farming life it takes this it does um <clears throat> sometimes and i like watching those other guys on youtube too showing you all the fun stuff and and, and they i know they get good views on the fun stuff but they have this tedious hard stuff too this is the real side of a lot of the farming especially the livestock industry I don't mean to make fun of the grain guys, but boy, the grain guys, uh, they have their heated shops and work on equipment, and I always enjoyed that. It's this stuff working out in the wind and the cold and hog houses and rusty stuff. That's what makes a lot of it kind of miserable. So uh, I got a lot of respect. I wish I was just a grain guy. I like doing the grain, but boy this livestock work and maintaining buildings and stuff 
it's brutal. Um, you look around and see that this ho this house, as of today, actually is full of pigs. So, two days after we fixed this, we got her filled up. That motor there, that ended up going out too. So, we uh, replaced that the next day. Didn't get that on video. Uh, Abby, it was too cold for Abby to be outside. So, uh, Papa and I did that ourselves. Now, you see... I am not so poor that I can't afford some decent bibs, but I have my old bibs on here. So if you see that, they're ratty and torn. Um, I basically use them for chaps. I just call them my chaps there. There I am getting some, over the years, some twine or something, getting the auger and cleaning that out. Uh, but those are my chaps. They're, they're for rusty, grungy, filthy work. I have work bibs, then I have my old work bibs. That just basically keep my pants clean. Take some of the abuse off of my pants. So it lasts a little bit longer. Working in these buildings. Like I say, it's tough. You can't look stylish in a hog house. It's, it's pretty difficult. So here I'm going to show you the inside. Now there's that slinky. That's called a flex auger. And there's two clamps there that you have to remove. One goes clear through the shaft and one doesn't. And you loosen that up, and then that auger, I'm showing you there, That's I only have like a hand width. I spread my fingers out. That's all I've got to work on next next to the ceiling there. And uh, we're getting that Allen wrench. We guessed right on the first one, too. Got the right Allen wrench. We end up loosening those two uh, Allen wrenches, uh, set screws up pretty good. Now we're outside, and this is pulling it out. And this was what was really windy. So we didn't think putting it on YouTube uh, would do very good to encourage people to watch if we had all that wind. But there she comes. That's the flex auger. And dragging it out. Dragging it out. All the way up the hill. And then she'll be coming here pretty soon. And you'll see. She'll flop out on the ground. And boom. There we go. We made it to the end. So now we're going to go over here and work on the white tubing. And replace some of that. All of that goes in there. And that turns. And that, that can turn corners. She sped this up here. I'm not super fast with a handsaw. I'm pretty fast. But not that fast. And I'll show you with the camera. The top part's going to be thick. And the bottom part's going to be thin. And that's what happens after 13 years of running an auger in there. See that top part nice and thick. But where the auger sits down low. See how thin that is? I mean, it's not paper thin, but it's getting really thin right there. Well, outside it's paper thin. So we're going to come out here. And, and what happens when there's a group of hogs in there, especially when they're big? You just make do. And now we're between groups of hogs. And we're working when, when we don't have to. Uh, and it's seasonal too. So we, we're replacing this in the off season and, and off groups. So we're, we wrapped in so, some tape and uh, duct tape and some other PVC splices there. And I'm, I'm having Papa come over and hold that, support that good, that, that tube's good enough right there. Now we're going to try to get this out of the building. It was stuck and I ended up having to go outside and jab it out, but we get it out. And all this bad piece that's been wrapped in tape, that's tile tape. If you think duct tape is nice, that gray tape is duct tape. You should try tile tape. Tile tape is really the cat's meow. Now it's more expensive, but that black stuff is like really wide, really heavy electrical tape. It's uh, it's the farmer's best friend, really. I love tile tape. Um, but here we are. I jabbed it outside. I'm gonna come out here and pull it the rest of the way out. And that whole entire piece is what we're gonna replace. And it's still thick at the top, but it was so thin at the bottom, it was literally uh, wearing thin and going through, so chunk that piece of junk on the ground show that piece of pipe who was boss okay now here's a new new we, we sized it and happy happy so sweet uh me and papa were discussing we call it discussing we don't really argue but we were heavily discussing where to cut that tube to make it perfect because it's very important that the tube is the exact perfect length here so um you have to be pretty precise so Papa and I, she edited that out. That was our discussion off screen. 
and we decided where to cut it. We got it cut. Now we're going to splice it inside. We use one of these couplings and splice it inside. Now for anybody who's whining, we don't use primer. Don't use primer. This is just feed. It, it has no pressure on it and it has no water on it. It's basically the auger will hold it together. You don't even have to use glue. And actually on the outside, we didn't even use glue. But inside here on this straight line, we'll go ahead and glue this coupling in. And we're going to glue that other side in and get it joined up. And um, you don't need primer on feed tubes, so no purple primer. I guess if you're doing water lines and you're so used to purple primer, that's fine, but no purple primer here. I'm going to put some glue on here. And like I say, glue isn't absolutely critical, but I daub it on good here, and it's going to stay, stay together in the, in the straight line. That curve... We don't use glue on the outside. Actually, the, the tension of the auger will hold it together. And I didn't use glue, glue on the outside because if you don't have the angles on them, them bends and them elbows, and that's like a 22 and a half degree elbow out there. If you don't have the exact right, uh, if you don't glue it at the exact right twist and angle, uh, you put a lot of tension against the auger and that, and that flex auger will wear way faster. And if you actually leave it loose, it has an opportunity to twist into the perfect shape. And if it's glued, it can't twist with the auger. So here I am, and I get it pretty close, and I think we're about right, but we don't glue it, and the auger will just uh, twist itself right into the perfect shape and allow some uh, spinning inside that tube. And that's that's how I have done it and I've never had any problems. I've never had anything pop out and I think that when it ha uh, is allowed to twist into the correct shape, it lasts much, much longer. So we get this put together. We're going to put the cable on and shove this auger back in. And this, you can see the wind blowing like, like my bib, my tattered bibs there are blowing. It's kind of miserable. And Abby's so faithful to be out there, but really, if I had known it was going to be this cold and windy, I probably wouldn't have even let her out. But she wanted something to put on YouTube for her channel here, so she's out there. We're working on it. We get that support. There's a little support cable there. Now we're going to shove this auger, and she's got it sped up here. She had some nice music playing with this, so it wasn't so boring, but... Uh, I'm doing the voiceover, so you can just, I could sing, but I don't think you'd appreciate that very much. So now if you notice there's on the end, there's a little stub shaft. We are going to have major difficulties with that. Little do I know at this point that we're going to spend an hour and a half inside trying to get this thing put back together. But uh, we lined that up and this is, that's a heavy, heavy auger and you are just, you're dragging it, dragging it that's quite the chore there and this is even sped up but that's quite the chore of ramming it into that tube it's it's very long and uh, quite tedious but we eventually get it in there and um, we're going to run around here and show you inside the building of the task now I had my head cocked sideways working in that blasted hopper that's called a boot that you're working in up there oh it was difficult i had a headache for three days because i i, I torqued my neck I, I was like that for an hour working on that thing and the clamp and the auger had shifted and it was rusty and it was very difficult to get it lined up and it's very difficult to break the auger loose off of that stub shaft to uh, be able to line it back up with that clamp inside and we worked for an hour and Abby was miserable. She even said, and Abby doesn't fade out very fast, but she was miserable. She wasn't very happy by the end of it. And um, she was cold. So this had really turned into an all-day job, and it wasn't very pleasant. And she sped it up here a little bit, and I work and work and work and work, and it wasn't pleasant. So she deleted or edited out quite a bit of the monotony. But... Um, I don't think you'd want to sit here for an hour as I got, but we were all pretty frustrated with it at, by the time we were done. Um, we don't get bent out of shape and yell and holler and fuss, but we're just, 
we just feel like we're about ready to be done by the time we're done with this. So you see me there at the end, I'm kind of <laughs> exasperated. So we got, we finally got it done. We were relieved, and now we're gonna line it up on the outside here. So we're gonna put that anchor back in. We're gonna pull that tension on that flex auger, and you see there that I'll show you here in just a second. So get that auger pulled to the end, and we're gonna pull it out and anchor it. Again, if you are not careful, you can have some major damage done to your fingers in these on the anchors. They'll either pinch blood blisters on your hands, or if you had like right there where I grab it, that's not real safe. If I if something if I wasn't ready and holding it, and uh, a safety came loose, and I just let my fingers get grab, it pulled in right there, it would be it'd be bad. There's not a whole lot of tension on this particular flex auger, so it wouldn't be as bad as some, but some of them are terrible. So if you are watching this video to learn how to do your own flex auger, be careful. And um, so we showed that quick clip. My dad, uh, Papa, was down at the other boot, and he has a stick in there as a, uh, as a scotch, as a chalk walk, so to speak. And they're right where, uh, and so it's holding it. But still, I'm, I'm pretty aware that it could slip, so always be careful. Now, that's rusty, as you see there. It's kind of difficult to line up, but it doesn't take us too long. This is a different style clamp out here on this end. But that flighting has to go in that slot, and then we set. There's just a square-headed uh, tension screw right there. And so it takes a little doing, but we get it done. And then you can twist that anchor into it, and then you set that screw. And this is a spin out here, and there's a ball bearing there, and that big red, uh, the, the end. And let's see. Yeah, it just takes a little bit. You got to line it up pretty perfectly. When everything's new, it's like anything, it goes together much better. But this was quite the chore here. So I feel like I should tell you guys a joke or something. So that you know, if you're still watching, you deserve a joke or something. But I'm trying to explain what's going on here. What's going on here is that it's February and we're just about tired of winter. And I'd rather get in some dirt instead and get out of this rust. I'm about tired of rust. I'm about tired of put, working on dilapidated buildings. And I'm about ready for some sunshine, warm temperatures, and dry dirt. But... If you want to be a farmer, you better get ready for lots of this. Unless you're unless you're spoiled enough to have everything new, this is the way you make money: is doing it yourself and and keeping things going. This is the difference between uh, <clears throat> sometimes profit and loss. So, I'm here still working on this. have to be a jack of all trades here and the angles have to be just right and there it slipped it lined up that uh, clamp twisted into the right direction and now all I have to do is uh, run it on a little bit further like that and then we're gonna uh, tighten the the bolt into the flighting here and I'm gonna, we're gonna be about done with this job. This ended up two and a half hour job. Got it tightened. It's done. We're, I'm gonna pull her out here, and he's gonna take that stick. You see that stick that's holding the auger in, and we're just using that other uh, hopper as an access tube. And then I'm gonna let her slide in tight. And there we go. He pulls it out, and we're gonna let her go in. There we go. Pulls itself in. We're going to put that clamp on. That clamp keeps that whole anchor from spinning. It should spin in a ball bearing. And please like the video. Please subscribe to us.